Good afternoon and welcome to Wraithwaite and the Lake District. So we've got the Ineos Grenadier. Two years ago I was in the prototype and that was back in the Yorkshire Dales. And now it's my turn behind the wheel. I'm Ben Quirk, welcome to Planet Auto. Welcome Lakeside and the Ineos Grenadier. So you had your intro back at Graithwaite, but now it's time to take a deeper look. The thing is, when we were in the prototype, well for a start it didn't look like this. Inside it was full of like aircraft aluminium and don't touch this. That was over two years ago. This is a fully road going version. Fitted with permanent four wheel drive as standard, it has a manual lockable centre diff for high and low, and optional electronic diff locks for front and rear. We've got an off road kit which gives you things like the rock sliders, powertrain, BMW. You can choose from a 3 litre turbo petrol or a 3 litre twin turbo diesel straight six. And the eight speed also. Yes, the box, an engine we've loved for years. And in this, it's such a seamless experience. It propels the vehicle like nobody's business. I think it's about 2.8 tonnes when you put, say, the rock sliders on and things like that. So it's not what you call a lightweight. You don't have to go for the station wagon. You can go for the Quartermaster, which is their pickup. The thing is, they all offer a very similar refinement, styling. You could even go for a Bell Staff edition. I suppose the primary thing for Sir Jim Ratcliffe was this had to appeal to an already established group. Farmers, off-roaders, and theirs, emergency services. It had to be good on-road, quite literally unstoppable, where you're going to have to go and look for somebody who's fallen down a crevice or whatever. Just look at the ride height. Also, it's wading depth. 0.8 meters. I mean, when you see the off-roading section, you'll see how capable this is. Nothing phases it. The way it puts the power down, it climbs effortlessly. And it does it in such a, I suppose it's a refined manner, which you wouldn't couple with, say, a Defender or certainly a Series. You know, those Land Rovers were, you know, bone shakers. This, Recaro seats, infotainment systems, the whole thing is just something completely different. But it still has the core values that every farmer and every off-roader looks for. It just puts such a grin on my face. If you like this type of video, why not subscribe to the channel? You just hit the button on the right hand side. It's free and you'll get an alert every time we upload. Also, if you do like the video, why not give it a like? It all helps and it means we can get more cars. Thank you. Prices yeah, grand upwards, but the point is you get something that, uh, in my opinion, is worth that money. And let's face it, farmers drive around in Hilux Invincible X's that cost nearly 50 grand anyway. So why not go for something like this? Styling. Well, an easily recognisable format and something that appeals already. Yes, it's familiar, but Ineos have put their own mark in it. And that's what stands out. Things like spots integrated into the grill. Yes, this all is very familiar. But the fact that these big bumpers jut out. Also, the way that they've designed some of the interior, so you can see the front wings for off-roading. Everything's been thought about. The LED lights that are automatic, high beam assist, and all that jazz. No rain sensing wipers. It's got Brembo brakes, maybe ladder frame, but doesn't carry the traits that you get with, say, older ladder frame, say, leaf spring, you know, old off roaders. It's not jittery. Whilst I was driving the Grenadier, I did realize that the steering was a little light. But I've looked into how the system actually works. It's recirculating ball, which is the same as our C124. Meaning, yes, it's hydraulic rather than electronic. So that makes perfect sense because I grasped it rather quickly. It felt light, but you expect that with that. Also, it has a steering box rather than rack and pinion. And that really helps off-road. It's one of those things you just have to get used to. You've got light steering, but to be honest, it's off-road bias. So when you get to a certain speed, it disappears anyway. Then it just feels well-grounded. The engine's powerful enough for everything it needs to do. And when we were speaking to the gent before, he said it was offering around 32 miles per gallon, which I don't think is bad for a three litre. When it comes to safety, the Grenadier has standard features that include rear park assist, cruise control, electronic traction control, electronic stability control, automatic hazard warning, intelligent speed assistance, lane departure warning, automatic emergency braking, and driver drowsiness detection. 
A rear view camera and front park assist is available as an option and when it comes to convenience you can access the Pathfinder sat nav, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto via the 12.3 inch infotainment screen. And there are three packs to choose from, a smooth pack, a rough pack and a saddle leather driver's pack. Check out www.ineosgrenadier.com for more information. We've got one here with the road tyres, we also had one with the BF Goodridge off-road tyres and that was pretty much unstoppable but if you're going to be doing more uh, business meetings this is probably the better configuration. Everything's just so well built, it's just... You look at that. Mind you, that's not surprising when you look at the suspension system on the Grenadier. It uses coilovers with reinforced dampers. That means you can replace one damper at a time. Less wear and tear because there's only two universal velocity joints and that means there's fewer moving parts to say independent systems. It has control arms that manage the axle movement on extreme terrain and the reinforced dampers come direct from a German automotive manufacturer ZF and of what we've seen of it, it does a damn good job. Could be raving about this for bloody years to come. It's an arch clearance here. Lovely alloy wheels. Yeah, if you're going to be doing lots of rocks and trees, maybe steelies are an option. The Grenadier has some rather impressive stats. It has an approach angle of 35.5 degrees, a breakover angle of 28.2 degrees, and departure angle of 36.1 degrees. And it'll tow up to 3.5 tonnes, and it can winch up to 5.5 tonnes. To be honest, I love it. Anyway, let's climb in. Good solid doors. Open to a decent point too. Soft touches, not what you expect. You just look at the trim, plush materials, padding, stitching, your electric windows, mirrors, everything is sturdy. But to be honest, when you're going off road with something like this, you don't want something that's gonna rattle. Plus, pulling down on things like the doors. So you can get all manner of options. You can get the roof racks. You could even go like base camp style and have the house on top. Rock sliders accessorize until your heart's content. Yeah, climbing in. Stealing it, you can hear how loud that alarm is. That is loud. That's mega. Yeah. <laughs> One of Annabelle's favorites is a side step. But to be honest with me, I can just, like most things, step right in. But at six foot three, I have got decent headroom, but we'll take a look at that in a moment. The interior layout, it mesmerizing. It's nothing particularly new. It's just, I suppose, the way it's executed. To not have an analogue style in something like this, it almost feels alien, but I like it. It makes it more minimalist. Also, it increases vision through the windscreen, things like that. Even this is a bit lower down. Most of your information's here when you're off-roading, so you can see the balance of the vehicle. You've even got your elevation in this dial. It's just here that has your speedo as a micro cluster. I suppose it's got certain ingredients that it needed, but then it's just thought, sod it. Let's make the best cake possible. Now all this, you look at it first and go, wow, this is complex, but it isn't. Off-road mode, descent control, wading modes, everything is very straightforward. And the way that it all feels, don't get me started on that. It's so well engineered. Nice and straightforward. It's got a vent. Chunky stalks, love it. And this, toot. <laughs> That's for bikes, that's awesome. The switch gear, the movement. Yes, it's full of hard plastics, but you want that. You want something dependable. You want something that's easy to clean. You want something strong. The build quality, I am shaking the vehicle. So, I mean, just listen to the door. Yes. You feel cocooned, you feel safe. Grab handles, light roof. If you've noticed, we've got like a micro sunroof too. But even without that, the headroom is still around two inches. When we own a farm, this is what I want. It may be priced pretty high, but to be honest, it reflects what's in here. It is different to a Defender, it is. I mean, for a start, the gearbox and the engine, smooth as silk, it really is. Rotaries, proper buttons. I mean, just look at the switch gear. It's a whole new level. The thing is, everything's straightforward. An off-road mode. Now, when you put it in off-road mode, it disables things like parking sensors and things that are just gonna get in your way. 
when you need to get to your destination, whether it's up a mountain or through a lake. And yes, a compass. It makes, I suppose, the common or garden off-roader something rather special. And then you top it off with Recaro seats. Comfortable, supportive, yes, the manual, but my word, they're proper driver's seats. We've got them in our Mark II Golf GTI. Air conditioning, seat heating, park assist. You've even got start stop. Look at this. The construction's mind blowing. Yeah, it's not the biggest glove box. It's just not a requirement. The storage area is the other point under this armrest. And it's lockable. Cup holders and an old school handbrake. You can't have an off-roader without one of those, to be honest. In Annabelle's words, it ticks a lot of boxes. And if you really want to go to town, why not stick a light bar on it? Right, let's take a look in the back. Grab handles as far as the eye can see. Love it. At a glance, you can tell it's capable. It may use things like a ladder frame chassis, but it does it in such an elegant way. And that's even off-road. It doesn't seem to bang and jostle about. It just, I suppose you'll have to see the off-road in section to see exactly what I mean. Anyway, let's climb in the back. I like this. Soft touches once again. Cup holders, electric window, and more padded areas. Now, climbing in, yeah. Uh, even for me, I mean, I've got my grab handle, but yeah, it's not bad to be honest. Climbing into off-roaders, it's a bit of an art anyway. I can get my feet under the seats. I've got decent leg room. Ooh, interesting. I wonder if that's the storage point under there. Rear vents, USBs. No, it's comfortable, it's roomy, and Recaro seats once again. I do love this trim. Comfortable, supportive, element of bucket, but to be honest, you need that off-road. And everything, once again, it's just sturdy. Recessed area here, and loads of leg room. Even at six foot three, I mean, just look at my headroom. It's a bit like a TARDIS. The one thing I do notice, is my eye line is about here so i have to be a little lower to see out but to be honest that's scraping the bottom of the barrel it would have been nice to see a sunroof in the back but with the privacy glass at least you've got the light headliner so it's not as dark as it could be plus the cabin it does let a lot of light in naturally anyway isofix point airbags so it'd be perfect for a family rock climbers farmers the list goes on let's take a look at the back one of the design features that really stands out to me is the rear lenses. LED once again. They give it such a presence. That's the thing, they had to make the Grenadier stand out from the rest of the crowd. And I think they've done it with some rather unique design cues. Spare wheel, Grenadier. Another accessory, this time a ladder. Yes again, solid. Tow bar, reversing camera, parking sensors everything that you'll need to um, off-road per se, per se the supermarket car park. Even when you've got it on the roads, it doesn't seem too wide. It's not this cumbersome beast that you would expect it to be. From the rear, you really get a feel for how high it sits off the ground. I think it's about 11 inches at the bottom of the diff. Look at this rock guard here. Ooh. All these things make it look cool. It just means when you're off-roading, you're not going to damage all the important components. Take a look at the back. Right, so, you open this one first, the baby door, and then handle here, and you just literally pull. Then, ta-da, look, even the struts, Ineos Automotive. Everything is just well-engineered. Solid, but it's trimmed nicely too. Decent storage area. Tethering points pretty much everywhere you look. There's even a tethering point here. 12 volt storage points. Don't know what's under there, we will not dig. You could quite easily get, I don't know, a couple of hay bales in there or whatever. It illuminates well too. I mean, just look at that, the power. Drop in the seats, you pull up this strap. Now that is heavy. Yes, it doesn't lay entirely flat, but it does increase the space. 
then yes, there is no false floor. But to be honest, nine times out of ten, this is going to be big enough anyway. Yeah, it feels like a proper Recaro, real weight to it. You might even need two hands to lift it back up. When closing, this one goes first. And then this follows. We've even got a release in here. To pop the bonnet, pull twice. <gasps> that is light. Grenadier, powered by BMW. Nice and easy to see where you top up all your fluids. And yes, the straight six. It's stiff, it's stiff forgiving at the same time. Yeah. yeah. Such smooth power delivery. Yeah, the peak torque is very low down on the diesel as well as the uh, petrol. But um, yeah, it's literally <laughs> not a tick over in the diesel. That's what I noticed when it was um, off road. It just climbs and climbs and climbs. Well, for example, it will self center. Yeah. I know it does it. It does it quicker than you expect. Because a G wagon doesn't tend to do that. G wagon feels weird. They feel I don't know. They almost feel like they should permanently be off road. Mm. Yeah, there's very little body roll in there. It's minimal. Yeah, mm. it's minimal. You expect more with something like this. I like driving this round here. I don't think it's too big either. It just feels no, okay. it's perfect. It feels like home, doesn't it? Yeah. You wait. Yeah, feel it was like almost biased to um, all wheel drive because the steering's so light. Yes. There, yes. But as soon as you get to about 20 miles an hour, it's completely exactly mitigated. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. Um, once you're up to sort of speed, it, you you don't notice it. No, you don't. And it is something that you do. To, you know, you'll get used to it quite quickly. Yeah. As you've already, already mentioned. Come on, Mr. Pheasant. So I was aware of the uh, you know the the BMW powertrain and things like that. Yes. Yes. Is this your sort of second time driving the car? No, I've never driven it. What were your thoughts off road? Bloody amazing. Yeah. Quite literally, nothing faces it. No, it's pretty effortless. In yeah, most, plus most, most of it, you can just let it do it itself. Yeah, it just it's, trudges along. Yeah, it's deceiving. Some people seem to sort of accelerate slightly uphill, and with it being in low range, you don't really need to. The actual torque of the engine. Well, I say we do a lot of off-roading. This is our back garden, essentially. I like the raised right hand and the view. It makes it so much easier around here. Yeah, the visibility is good. You know, hence why this is obviously in the centre instead of directly in front of you. It's very it well designed. Yeah, it was taken into consideration, you know, for off-road purposes. Uh, but so yeah, it just aids with visibility so you can actually see the wings. Yeah. Which is a pair of that straight six. <laughs> oh. And there you have it. A very brief driving section. The thing is, when you've got a co-driver, you're kind of limited in what you can offer, especially in the driving section. So what we've done is gone back to Ineos and requested a Grenadier for a road trip and a full review. And of course, off-roading, hopefully, we'll be seeing that rather soon. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to check out our off-roading video.